we are checking out Effectrix 2 by Sugarbytes, specifically its effects and parameters. The first effect we're going to be looking at in this video is the modulation, which is a classic chorus slash flanger effect. So this makes a copy of your signal and then mixes it with the original in interesting ways to get that, you know, classic flanger chorus sound. The first parameter we have is rate. This determines how fast the modulation happens. Let me just make sure we have some depth and feedback so you can really hear this. We have the option to have this synced like it is now, or we can switch it to free so we can define the time in milliseconds. The depth parameter is the amount of modulation that gets applied, so crank this up to get a much more affected signal. We can choose different curves which can give different results. Uh, you can think of it like a shape of an LFO. Offset lets us set a delay before the depth is applied. This works with the curve shape, so play around here for different results. We can of course choose whether we want a flanger or a chorus. The flanger has a short delay time, usually 1 to 20 milliseconds, and that's a great sound design tool, whereas the chorus has longer delay times, around 20 to 50 milliseconds. It's usually better for thickening up your sound. The feedback controls the amount of the signal that's fed back into the input, so the higher this is, the more emphasised and more wild the sound will be. And we're currently on normal mode, like previous effects we can choose the inverse mode, which flips the phasing 180 and that just softens things up as it's fed back into the input. The width controls the stereo spread. We also have a nice simple cutoff filter here with resonance. This is a single knob, so if I bring the cutoff to the left, we get a low pass. And if I bring it to the right, we get a high pass. Next up is the delay, because you can't have an effect plugin without a good old fashioned delay. The delay L and the delay R dials allow us to set the delay times for both the left and right channels. We can choose from fixed synced plane increments like we are now, or we can choose sync all increments and that gives us access to triplets and dotted values. We can choose sync 16 to set the sync times to 16th note steps. Or we can just choose milliseconds to define the delay time ourselves. The feedback is how much of the signal is fed back into the input, so extending the time it takes for the delays to fade away. Pitch dial lets us pitch shift the delayed signal each time, so giving the effect of rising or falling. The pan determines where in the stereo spectrum each delay is placed, so input simply lets us set the pan of the input signal, whereas feedback controls the pan based on the feedback signal, Cross feeds the delays from the opposite channel into the feedback path. And ping pong alternates between sending the delays left and right, and left and right. We have a cutoff filter, so we can remove frequencies each time the delay signal is played, and this also has resonance control. This is a lot of fun to play with if you're using extremely fast delays. Or you 
can also use it for long dubbed out delays. Next up is the reverb, which is great for adding space and depth to our sound. The size parameter determines the room size, so as we move this around we get bigger and smaller reverbs. Damp controls how much of the reverb's reflection is dampened, so this shapes the reverb so it decays a bit more naturally and it removes some high frequencies. Wood spreads the reverb out into the stereo spectrum, it gives it a much wider sound. Pre-delay determines how long the reverb waits before playing after it receives sound, so this can be useful for giving the impression of distance. Pan's quite simple, it controls the left and the right pan of the reverb. And finally we have a low cut and a high cut, so we can filter out anything below and above certain frequencies. This can be used creatively, or it can be helped used to remove you know, unwanted frequencies such as reverb in the bass. And lucky last on the list is Level. So while this is the most basic of the effects, it can be super useful from both a creative point of view and a utility point of view. The volume control simply controls the volume from 0 to 100%, but where this shines is if you start adding some modulation. For example, I'm going to apply Step Train and give it some rhythmically gated values. The pan is just a simple pan control, left for left, right for right. Gain lets you boost the audio up to 12 dB, so it's quite handy if something in your effect chain has dropped the volume, you might have worked on something and it's gone all crazy and now you're getting a very low volume. Here, you can bring it back up again. The limiter lets you limit your signal to a certain dB, so this is handy if you're working with the more destructive effects that can get out of control really easily. You can set a fixed value here and it will mean if anything goes too crazy, your eardrums are safe. And we can also choose how fast this reacts, we've got fast, normal or slow. And finally we have the stereo parameter. This lets you widen or shorten the stereo imaging of your sound. So if I set this to negative 100, we now have a mono signal. As I bring it up to zero, the stereo image is unaffected. And at 100%, everything is really pushed out, widening the stereo imaging that already exists.